doing a sneak, a little sneak clip. I'm telling you, this tea is so good. Even the dry leaf is just delightful, buttery, nutty. Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back. Today we're gonna do a tasting of a Tie Guanyin a Oolong Tea, a very famous Oolong Tea. Oh yeah. To those of you who have been into the tasting grade of tea, it's Tie Guanyin is like, oh I know that tea. Like, I had that so many times, mm -hmm. but every Tie Guanyin is different. So today what we're having here is a different Tie Guanyin you haven't tasted yet. <laughs> it's an amazing take one. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's an impromptu video. We're doing this. Uh, this is a new tea to our website. Uh, uh, I will put the link down below. Uh, and this is not in my video shooting plan at all. But uh, yesterday when we were tasting yes. this tea, we were mm. like, this is such a lovely tea and it's such a familiar tea to people. But it's so different than what probably most of you are used to as a Tie Guanyin. Spoiler alert, the bar has been raised right here, <laughs> okay? I'm so excited. I'm super happy that we're coming back to taste this again, just because I want to taste it again. I'm glad you guys are here, but I just want to taste this tea again. Anyway, so if you're new to the channel and you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe so you know whenever we do a new video and uh, hit the notification bell and uh, give us a thumbs up because I want to taste the tea. Now go. <laughs> While the water is boiling, is on the way to boiling, is being boiled? All of the above. Okay. <laughs> while the water boils. Oh, while the water boils, we're gonna have some examination of the dry leaf look as well as smell the dry leaves. Because I found you particularly very enjoy the dry leaf aroma. Yes. This, oh, now I get it. Right? This is a really nice, uh, some tea is really. Oh, you want three smells? I'm going to talk about that. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering about all the smelling the dry leaf and all the weird stuff we're about to do with the tea in terms of smelling and tasting, we've got some great videos on the channel on how to taste tea. They're game changers if you're into tasting anything, but especially tea. They're game changers for really how to tap into your senses. Mm. I am not a natural born taster. If you go to these <laughs> parties or gatherings where there's foodies and they're describing all these flavors with fancy words and all that stuff. First, don't let it intimidate you. Second, check out those videos. Um, there's some great ones in our Sunday tea book. There's a great video just dedicated to how to taste tea. They will help you learn. You can learn this. It is not magic. You do not have to be a chef. Anyway, let's get to it. I have to say, that's interesting because yesterday I didn't quite get why he was super excited about the dry leaf. When I smell the dry leaf without being warmed, it was a little bit like not much to me. I cannot pick out or anything, but just now somehow I got a... For me it was a hawthorn I was thinking about. Oh, that's so interesting. Something really sweet and yes. with a tartness and it has that fruity. It's not a bizarre combination. It's a very natural combination that I'm familiar with. I, I was initially going for like oranges and stuff, but it's not as concentrated mm -hmm. a smell. No, I like totally this. agree. I totally agree. Yesterday I was getting nutty, buttery, like a creamy aroma. Today I did have that sweetness right? that you're getting. I don't know if it's the room difference or just because it's been in this dish, but it's got a sort of that sweet, almost that corn cob sweetness is punching through for me mm. on the dry leaf here today. So. Mm. Yeah, smell your leaf and then look at your leaf before you. And different days could be different. You That's why it could be say. the temperature or something else. It Absolutely. could be just me. Absolutely, and it just helps enhance the experience. We might be uh, noticing some different notes than what we had yesterday. I, I'm willing to take the risk. Right, might have to update the uh, thing, and I'm gonna put different uh, uh, leaf amount. Yesterday I got pretty about my ridiculous leaf amount. It was a little bit over the top, but it was really good. She, you're a very good brewer. You can really dial in your brewing to the situation. I am going to say this though. If the tasting notes are a little bit different, I'm not updating the website, folks, okay? I'm counting on you 
to get down to the link down below, pick up this tea, and throw down some comments with your own tasting notes right on the website, okay? That's, what, that's what's going to happen here. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Okay, I might update them if they're dramatically different. I don't expect they'll to be... The dry leaf aroma for me wasn't dramatically different. It was very similar to that creamy, buttery, nutty I had yesterday. Mm. Just a little hint of the sweetness was coming through though today. Let's see how the human... I'm trying to quit air passing. Air passing, yes. Better to do a... Grown. It's just in the uh, leisure habit that we do that in the kitchen a lot and now I'm like, oh, tea brewery, let's don't break anything. Mm, a little grainier than, uh, mm. than the... Not the as a corn... Yep. Yesterday I had a really strong corn off, fresh boiled corn cob. cob. Corn on the cob, yeah. Mm, yeah, this is more, I'm getting more grainy, multi sweetness. It still has a Grainy, creamy, yeah. a creamy really texture. Mm -hmm. oh really sweet though. Really sweet. Mm, similar to yesterday. Mm. The Gaiwan lid on the Ritz is maybe not surprisingly, or maybe just for me, but very tame. Check back in with the Gaiwan lid if you're trying this tea, because I can tell you, spoiler later, that Gaiwan lid will be exploding mm. with a gorgeous floor. Right now, it's pretty tame. It's really fun to notice how it mm. changes. I have to say, I, I lower the leaf amount, because also, we did the tasting yesterday. I want to be something different, not mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. identical the two days but I feel a little bit unsatisfied with the mini oolong tea amount. I like the oolong leaf fill the whole guy one and this I will have to give it a longer steep mm -hmm. and we'll see how that affects. Yeah that'll be interesting. I'm calm. But yesterday it didn't fill the guy one, it overfilled the guy one. It was exploding out, it was so beautiful. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. And your brew was perfect. Look at that uh, brilliant gold liquor. Again, I'm coming back to that multi sweetness. The bottom cup that I just smelled in the empty sharing pot really uh, a thick, sweet, multi aroma. Really lovely. Did you notice we switched the uh, position? It's a little bit awkward because I got everything set up on my side over there. More of that corn note on the liquor aroma. Mm hmm. It's really, um, for me, the liquor smell is more a row, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, floral, floral, creamy. Mm. Mm. Creamy floral, yeah. Thick to the, the mouthfeel of this tea is really, really lovely. Mm. Thick, maybe soupy, like it has a yes. brothy texture. It's it's full. Mm. You don't feel like it's watery or thin. It's not thick in the sense of viscous, but it's thick in the sense of content. Um, yes, I think one of the uh, the driving reason I want to shoot a video about this tea is because that strong contrast between what I smell vis-a-vis -vis what I taste. Mm. Not in terms of notes, but talking about the intensity level. Uh, even though we have been describing about the dry leaf, the warm leaf, and the liquor smell and stuff, none of those are overly booming. Like when mm. I brew, That's it right. has a gentle like a tea, kind of a really thin smell. Every smell is light and really stick to the tea. Like it doesn't just flow and uh, escape easy. It's really maintained. Yeah, I agree. In there's, word. there's an elegance, um, a dignity about the aromas that we're dealing with here. Right? You might have a doubt. 
It's like, oh, this is not that, you know, booming kebab that I'm used to. And you might wonder, like, would this tea taste good? And that's where you get hit. The pleasant surprise. Once you take a sip, everything is in the mouth. Mm. Yeah, very complete. Oh. Very integrated flavors. Right, and the intensity, how it lingers, not just the linger, when it's in your mouth, it's a mm. boom there. The texture of the liquor is there. The, there's no lack of aroma. Mm, it just fills your whole mm -hmm. head of yes. that. Yes. It's yeah. very, and because it's not overly, you know, floaty aroma and stuff, I use the word grounding to describe mm. this tea because mm. I feel like it's not lack of something, but it's a very calming, elegant expression of its profile. Mm. And just, I was just now holding my mouth closed after the sip and just breathing out over, you know, mm. after I've swallowed the tea, as you were talking about lingering, and I was just reflecting on that. Yes, it's just, even now, still filling my mouth with that flavor. I got this gentle tartness at the back of my tongue right, yes. right away on yes. this infusion. Very delightful. It's just yes. a little, um, I don't want to say a tingle, but a little sensation that kind of rounds yeah, it has up a sensation. Experience. Yes, for mm. sure. Really pretty liquor color. Yep. Um, this reminds me of our tea trip in uh, 2019. 2019? Yes, 2019 yeah. tea trip. We visited uh, a Taiguanyin farm, which is fantastic. You can check that out in our on our website. Uh, some really fantastic articles in our magazine, Charing. You know what I mean? You, I'm thinking the same thing I was thinking yesterday. I do the write-ups on the website, so if the if you think the write-ups are mediocre, blame me. Uh, if you love them, also blame me. Um, but every time I write up a really great tea, I always want to write down Taiwanian flavor. Like this is really yes. Like when I said at the beginning, is this going to raise the bar? This is a bar-setting Taiwanian. Yeah. It's it's really. Mm. In Chinese, we call that Guan Yin Yun. Mm. Yin has that uh, special taste that tastes of Tie Yin. It's a you know a complex combination mm. of. Uh, I just taste. got that little, that little tart, kind of along the. Mm. It's really interesting. The smell intensity is. Do I say that's light? I think the smell is a thick. You know, almost a heavy kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Like when I yeah. when I smell that here, not much. Here a little bit. Here the richness is starting to hit. Richness. There's yes. nothing like light. That light doesn't describe it at all. It's mm. elegant, but mm -hmm. it is. It's on the other hand, it's still bold. Maybe confident. Yes. Yes, you know, it's exactly. really a tough to describe character that the flavor is so full and big, but still sophisticated and elegant. Um, oh, it's just really rich. Everything is there in the mouth. And I just love that sensation of that gentle tartness at the back of the tongue. Back, root of the tongue, on both sides. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, I got a new kettle with Boiling water. I really enjoy brew this tea with boiling water. Mm. Mm. I enjoy you brewing this tea with boiling water too. How lucky am I? <sighs> Try it. It's mm. very, very floral. Less of the creaminess in it, but it, there's a touch. It's really... Um, I don't know what to call it. I call this the high note floral because I get floral from the bottom cup, from the lid in this case, both, like it, for this tea, not for all teas, but 
But for this tea, I get it from the lid, the, the aroma, but the, the floral on the Gaiwan lid is, is more airy, light, you know, floaty. Right. Kind of right. those things. Really beautiful, really sweet. Mm. But not the bottom cup is also sweet, more like a thick sweet. Mm. This is a, I don't know, I don't know. Any, you know, it has a little bit of. I don't know if you have a. No, 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 I think that. you would describe that perfectly. Mmm. Oh, boy. Hmm. This is very pleasant. If you take away the sweet potato sweet, does that make that a potato? <laughs> In terms of taste, that's what I was thinking. At first I was like, oh, that's so sweet potato. But it doesn't smell sweet to me. Mm. And I'm like, oh, then what? It's not Just potato. a boiled potato, but it's not. It's not it's potato, not. no. I think a sweet potato without the sweet is better. <laughs> it's not potato. I just want to say, because we were mm. smelling the Gaiwan lid, and because it sits for a bit for the water to boil, this yeah. is a stronger brew. Yeah, and fresh boiling water is stronger, but... But mm. it's not bitter at all. No, really. No bitter and no astringency. That's right. Just a little bit more uh, potent, but really it's still very pleasant. Mm. Mm. Oh, I forgot to mention. Really full. Right. No, no, no. That's not nice. Because when you look at the leaves and the stuff, you might think that this tea feels like, uh, uh, like the Qingxiang, the light, greener mm. version of Tie Guai, oh, but it's point. not. It's <laughs> not at all. I call that properly roast. But uh, most of the time, people would think, you know, if it's a charcoal roasted Tie Guai, people or, or just a roasted it doesn't have to be charcoal. I mean. Uh, people will think about well, something really dark or something really just a roasty and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not the purpose of roasty. Ro mm -hmm. Roasting has more complex function yeah. in terms of tea making. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is like a perfect illustration of that. A good roast sets the tone of the tea, make the quality last longer, mm -hmm. stable. 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 That's a really good way to put it. Uh, and it adds to all that is there and it shows that has some roasting but it's not you're not gonna like it, this doesn't taste like any regular char uh, like a roasted uh, tie guan yin would be it would feel like it's a, a middle of the road is mm. understatement for this tea yeah, in terms sure. of the grain or roast I it's think the a, reason you say proper is because in a Tae Guan Yin, you don't want to taste roasting. You want to taste Tae Guan Yin. And this roasting nailed that. It, it it's very much in energy. Even mm, people think about the Yan Cha rock tea, it's like, oh, roasting. Mm. You're not supposed to just taste the roast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's do have another look at that leaf color on your mm. right. Even with a stronger brew, it's a strong. The profile is a. It's thicker. It's consistent. It's consistent. The profile is consistent. Mm. Yes, it's. Um, I do feel a stronger sensation mm -hmm. at the back of the tongue, mm -hmm. but it's not. Like, it's not I didn't feel like all. any yeah. bitter or anything at all. Well, folks, we have lots of infusions left with this tea. Um, we were just talking about roasting. That's another characteristic of a properly made tea is you're going to get more mileage out of it. Mm -hmm. So we are going to move to our fireplace to finish it. <laughs> um, if you follow us on uh, social media, you may have seen of some of our shots over the holidays. Right. We've been enjoying that. Our uh, recent obsession. <laughs> yes, so we're going to go finish this tea. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Please. Subscribe to the channel and click the notify bell so you'll know whenever we post a new video. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping. <laughs>